North Korea acknowledges custody of a black U.S. soldier seeking to defect. Taiwan's vice president returns home from Paraguay and a controversial stopover in San Francisco. The U.S., South Korea and Japan huddle in Camp David and agree on increased defense cooperation. And Korean-American Jessica Pagula wins the Canadian Open that VOA's Chris Cascajo all sums up in this Asian Weekly Digest. The U.S., Japan and South Korea get set to mark a new milestone in trilateral cooperation. Welcome to VOA Asia Weekly. I'm Chris Cascajo in Washington. That story is coming up, but first making headlines. North Korea officially confirmed it was detaining a U.S. soldier who crossed the demilitarized zone last month. North Korea state media said that Private Travis King did so because he harbored ill feelings against inhuman mistreatment and racial discrimination within the U.S. Army. U.S. officials believe King crossed the border intentionally and have declined so far to call him a prisoner of war. The Speaker of Indonesia's Upper House of Parliament said on Wednesday that it is important for the country to discuss ways to delay elections during crises. The country currently has no framework to delay an election. Critics worry that the idea may be a move by allies of President Joko Widodo to extend his time in office. His second and final term ends next year. A throng of supporters and protesters greeted Taiwan's Vice President William Lai in San Francisco Wednesday. He returned home Thursday after visits to Paraguay and layover stops in the United States. Speaking Tuesday in Paraguay, where he attended the new president's inauguration, Lai said any Chinese military action in response to his stopovers in the U.S. would be an attempt by Beijing to interfere in the self-ruled island's elections next year. China's foreign ministry spokesperson said that China's economic recovery will be a bumpy and tortuous process, but that Western critics would be proven wrong. U.S. President Joe Biden said that China's mounting economic problems made it a ticking time bomb. Biden and First Lady Jill Biden will travel to Maui next Monday in the aftermath of the deadliest wildfires in the U.S. in more than a century, the White House announced Wednesday. Japanese lawmakers visited a Tokyo shrine viewed by China and both Koreas as a symbol of wartime aggression on Tuesday. The trip comes as Japan marks the 78th anniversary of its surrender in World War II. Historically frosty relations between Tokyo and Seoul have rapidly thawed over the last year amid shared concerns about China's assertiveness in the Pacific and North Korea's nuclear threats, setting the stage for the trilateral summit with the U.S. on Friday. South Korea's President Yoon suk yeol said the summit at Camp David will be a new milestone in trilateral cooperation. Yoon attended the 78th Liberation Day anniversary in Seoul on Tuesday. Yoon says the three-way cooperation with the U.S. and Japan for sharing intelligence and North Korea missile data is crucial for defending against North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. VOA spoke with Ambassador Joseph Detrani, a former U.S. Special Envoy for negotiations with North Korea. I think that's the, that's the front and center piece where South Korea and Japan and the United States are committed to a strong uh, allied uh, uh, position on, on on deterring North Korea from doing something of a provocative nature that could that could lead to accidental conflict. Ambassador James Jeffrey, former Deputy National Security Advisor, on the message the three countries are sending to China and Russia. The very fact that holding this meeting will send shivers down the spines of President Xi and President Putin. This is exactly what they don't want. It will also make them think twice about taking new aggressive action, which is exactly what we want. Senior U.S. officials said the leaders of the three countries will launch a series of joint initiatives on technology, education, and defense. Japan plans to spend more than $315 billion in the next four years on its defense program due to China's increased aggression. The ban on military equipment exports, lifted in 2014, has limited international sales for many Japanese defense companies. More than 100 Japanese companies have left the defense sector over the past 20 years. For the Japanese defense companies, the self-defense forces are the only uh, buyer. So it's not so easy for those companies to make profits by making weapons. Uh, and because of that, uh, several, particularly smaller uh, companies, are now uh, going uh, away from those defense uh, industries. A recent poll shows slightly more than 40% of voters want to expand Japan's self-defense forces, up from 29% five years ago. Visit VOANews.com for the most up-to-date stories. Thanks for watching VOA Asia Weekly. I'm Chris Cascajo.